What's going on guys? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome to another video and we are outside of the Encore playing a tournament. Why wouldn't we be? Um, it's $1,100 one day event and we're doing this as a little bit of a warm up before the main event that we're going to play tomorrow. So next vlog will be the main event, I think. And uh, yeah, a little warm up. Hopefully we can run deep. One day events are a lot of fun and things are going to go really quickly. So late regging it coming in soon. And the buy in is just one of these bad boys. One yellow bird and we'll enter in 200,000 guaranteed in the prize pool. Try to run it up. Thanks for watching. Leave a like. That's always cool. Let's hop into it. Into the $1,100 daily we go and we start off in level five. Blinds are 300, 600, 600 and we pick up ace queen of clubs under the gun. I raise it up to 1200 and get the button and small blind to call. So let's go three ways to a flop. Flop comes queen, five, six, two hearts. This is pretty ideal with ace queen. I bet out 1800. The button raises to 4,300 and action folds to me. I'm out of position and he covers me and I am just happy to get stacks in here with top top. Don't want to let him see a good price with this small raise with his draws or whatever holdings he may have. So let's try to get it all in. We start off with 25,000 and I put in a very small three bet to 10.5K. And sadly, he folds super quickly. I was hoping that the small three bet would induce a call. Then we can just rip it all in for like 12,000. No success here, but we still get chips pushed our way first hand into this tournament. And the second significant hand picking up pocket eights in the cutoff. There's a low jack who does a little limpy poo. Seen him limp queen jack suited before, so certainly can limp some strong hands. I obviously put in a raise with a good hand to 1800. Folds back to the limpy poo, low jack, and he calls. The flop comes king seven five rainbow, and he checks. I bet out twelve hundred, and he folds. Pretty insignificant hand, but it's nice to show that early on in this tournament, we're scooping some pots and building a stack. As buying in late in the tournaments, it's always crucial to win the pots early on. In the following hand, with queen three of spades on the button, I raise it up to fourteen hundred dollars. The big blind defends, so definitely a raisable hand here on the button. We're off to a flop of ace, nine, five, rainbow. Pretty dry flop. He checks to me, and I'm going to start bluffing and barreling off here. I bet small to 800. He makes the call, and well, we're going to have to navigate this one. And we see a good looking turn in the 10 of spades. Brings in our backdoor flush draw, and this time he leads for 2,000. Well, I'm certainly never going to be folding and raising at this point doesn't seem like a good option. So with my queen high flush draw, I make the call and hope to see a river. River is the deuce of diamonds, pretty much a brick. But he decides on a check. And now I feel like my hand here can block a lot of the bluffs and air balls that he may have. We have queen high and I think betting here will never get an ace to fold and rarely a 10 to fold either. So I said to give up, check this one back and wave the white flag and see what he's playing. And he announces Jack high flips over Jack eight off suit. It looks like, and oh my God, queen high is going to win. Couldn't be happier about winning a pot like that. Progressing to level six blinds are 400, 800, 800. And we pick up pocket sixes in the hijack. I raise it up to 1600, but Unbeknownst to me, there is an underground player who limped, so didn't see that coming. Anyways, this underground player makes the call after limping, and we're off to a flop of 10 6 deuce, 2 diamonds. He now leads for 2,500. I'm pretty confused about how this hand is developing so far, but with second pair, I don't think I can fold just yet. I make the call and see a turn. Turn comes in 8, and he decides to go all in. Yeah, it is 27,000 effective as he covers my stack. And uh, geez, I can't call this, I don't think. So I just throw my cards back at the dealer. He shows us pocket nines, which is totally fine. Happy to just get away from this one. But nice hand, sir. A um, little confused as to how this hand was played, but you know, you got it. Take down the pot. 
We're back to closest starting stack with 27,000 in our stack, and we've progressed to level eight. Blinds are 600, 1200, 1200, and looking down at king, queen of spades under the button. There is a plus one open to 3,000. Now I have 22,000 in stack, and you know, I've just got a jam. I go all in, this player in plus one thinks about it for a while and ends up folding, and he folds face up king, queen of clubs. I'm pretty happy about it as we we're pretty likely to chop this one, barring any spade or clubs on the flop. But we'll take this one down and here we are, right back to starting stack. In this hand, picking up pocket sixes once again, we're on the button and there's a plus one limp of 1200. Action folds to me, I have 26,000 in stack and it seems like an okay spot to rip it all in. 20 big blinds, right, over a limper. I haven't been involved too much, so I decided to just go for it. Blinds will pick up relatively soon, so I jam. Action folds back to this plus one player who thinks about it for a little bit. This is the same player that I actually jammed into earlier last hand and folded king queen of clubs. And he thinks about it for a while. He ends up making a comment about how this is the second time I jammed into him. And he ends up making the call with ace 10 of spades. So it's a total flip. And we're off to a run out where I turn a boat. So a full house is going to be hard to beat. I survive, find a double up, and funny story that this opponent happens to be Ryan Garcia. Pretty famous boxer who has been playing a lot of poker recently, especially at the win. So found out a few days after I doubled up through him. And it's cool to say that I won a pot against one of the better boxers in the world. Happy to beat him on the felt, but he certainly can beat my ass up in real life. Update time, we're on break and pretty much didn't have to show any of the hands that we played earlier this video. And only had to show the pocket sixes because our stack went as high as like 35k, almost 40k. Went back down to starting stack, then doubled the starting stack and here we are. Sitting at around 50,000 in chips and blinds are going up and at the very least we survived till late reg so this was only a one bullet adventure. And uh, I don't really know what to say, there's a lot of limpers, like right now, this specific day, there's a lot of people playing either the main event or like the high roller series at Aria. So um, this tournament field seems like it's a pretty good one and the table seems like it's a lot of fun. So I'm having a good time and trying to pick my spots. But anyways, blinds are going up. The structure seems pretty fast, so we're gonna get involved even though we have like 30, 35 big blinds uh, to start the next level. Anyways, we'll see how it happens. Wish us luck and try to run it up. After the break, blinds are up to 1,500, 1,500, and I look down at Jack Nine of Diamond in the hijack. I raise it up to 3,000, and there's a small blind player who has a massive stack. He calls, and the big blind comes long as well. So three ways the flop comes jack high. It's jack, six deuce, two spades, and a diamond. All around pretty good flop for me, although we have a really weak kicker. I throw it a bet of 3,500 here with the top pair and both players surprisingly come along. So things are looking a little dicey at this point. We're off to see a turn, which is the five of diamonds. Two flush draws and we improve to the diamond draw along with the top pair. Action checks to me again. And considering I have a pretty bad kicker along with the flush draw, I think I should be checking here a lot of the time. I think there's a good chance that our kicker and top pair is beat right now. So check it back and see a river. Hoping to see a diamond, which comes a board pairing fives. So sadly, not the river I wanted to see, but here the small line bets pretty small. It's 7,000 and the big line snap calls this bet. And wow, now we're in quite the spot with top pair, not the best kicker and pretty confused as to what's going on. The more I think about it, the more I think it's super ambitious to think that my top pair is good here. Although, of course, given a really great price to call and hope to be good, there's already 34,000 in the middle and it's only 7K to call, but I ended up folding. The small blind shows queen jack off suit, big blind mucks, and we lose. Nice to lose the minimum, but the stack is dwindling down to 37,000 at this point. With the blinds increasing, we're up to level 10. Blinds are 1,000, 2,000, 2,000. And I look down at queen seven off suit in the big blind. Action folds to the small blind who decides to call and limpy poo. I'm gonna check this one with a not so great hand. And we're off to a flop of ace, queen, four, two clubs. He bets out 2,000 and with second pair, I'm certainly just going to make the call, not going to be folding just yet. The turn is a three. 
inconsequential card for the most part, and he checks. In position, I think I can go either way with a check or bet. I think when we're playing blind versus blind, I think I can bet for value with worse hands. And with second pair, I decided to go for it and bet small to 3,500. And for this small bet, he makes the call. So off to see a river, which comes the queen of hearts. Pretty nice to have trips here in the spot. And I have 30,000 with 17,000 in the middle already. He checks again and let's go for some value. I'm praying that we get called by some sort of ace X holding. So I bet big almost the size of the pot and half my stack. It's 15,000. Stick it in the middle and he thinks about it for a little bit, obviously hoping for a call, but he actually ends up jamming. He covers me and I'm just gonna snap this off with trips. I'm hoping he overplayed an ace or tried to make an ambitious bluff and none of those are true. He only has pocket aces, wow. That's one way to end the tournament life. Give him the rest of my chips and GG's. That's one way to bust out of a tournament. What the hell was that? How the hell, how the hell do I run into aces in that fashion? That's like so stupid. Anyways, we're out and uh, we weren't really close to the money at all in the slightest. So now I don't know what to do. That's it, but that's gonna end this vlog though. Let me know what you guys think about these tournament videos. It's like really unfortunate that I've been breaking out a lot of them. And that's just kind of the life and what you're expecting when you play a lot of tournaments is that you bust a high percentage of them. And even though you make it like top 30% of the field, it just doesn't matter because you have to make top 10, 11% to cash. And um, yeah, that sucked. But um, there's always the main event that's gonna come up soon. Tomorrow I'm gonna play that. So there's a video coming soon. Really looking forward to it. I don't know, man. I don't know what to say. Uh, <laughs> it's been pretty bloody in these tournament streets. Let me know what you guys think about these tournament vlogs. I know that a lot of them are gonna be busts and I really don't like the idea of making these videos and just busting a bunch because it's not like super entertaining, I don't think, but it is part of the poker grind and that's kind of what I wanted to show. So let me know in the comments below. If you guys don't want to see it, then I can filter out more of these like tournaments where I play like a handful of hours of bust. But let me know. Thanks so much for watching. Like this video and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.